a fabulous shot. And welcome to the 2023 Predator WPA World 10 Ball Championship. 128 players, $250,000 in prize fund, $60,000 for the first prize of this tournament with a first stage is race to eight, double elimination, winner breaks. And this is George Teichan Booth, joined by the beautiful and talented Margaret Fefilova. Hi everyone, hi George. Hi. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Yes. Me. First time we've done commentary together, and uh, I so. Uh, so I'm really, really excited to have you break down a lot of the shots for us. Uh, I love your YouTube channel Thank and you your, so much. the less the instructional videos that you have. Uh, Q Sports International and Predator have brought this together for you. We have Fargo Rate, Medalla Light, Rums of Puerto Rico, Cyberts, Jam Up Apparel, and Kamui. Torsten Homan to break off the balls. Torsten Homan and Ta Van Ling. I think it's going to be an exciting match. Both players are pretty tough. And just going into this long format with like races to eight for the World Handball Championship. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of pull to be watched. Mm -hmm. Now we are playing WPA rules where the 10 ball does not count on the break and no early 10s. I love this rule. Mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of like the early 10s because it can make the game a little more exciting. In fact, I kind of wish they would they would uh, play it to where the 10 ball can be called at the same time as, for instance, the two for two-way shots. Sure. No, I definitely know what you mean, but that's the thing. Like, there's a difference between being excited for spectators yeah. and for the players. Like, as a player, I'm telling you, like, I don't want early 10s to happen. You don't want? Okay. You know, it's, hey, just, you know. it's just not something that you, like, yeah, if you can avoid this rule, it's better because... You know, it's we have enough enough of nine ball when there's a lot of luck involved. So when you play ten ball, you really want it to be 100% call shot and no early ten. I think it's just the best rule. Actually, you make a great point. Ball. Here's a good look at this 31-year-old from Vietnam. He is sponsored by Perry Cues, and that's what he's using. I'm actually excited to see this player in action because I haven't heard of him before. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's so many good players that we, we haven't really seen yet. So very that, true. that's a good, very, very true. A good opportunity to see them play. In fact, just prior to this tournament, we had the Alpha Las Vegas open with 192 players. And we had the cream of the crop from all around the world. Oh, absolutely. He was probably one of the toughest tournaments I've ever seen, to and, be honest. And for Viktor Zelinski to come through and win it again, what a feat he just It is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, seriously, it is tough enough to get in top three with such mm -hmm. a hard competition. But to defend his title, it's, it's, it's unreal. It Hats is. off to him. The kid works extremely hard, and it's just great to see the hard work is paying off. Well, Ling, two rail kicking this ball, or maybe just straight down. There he goes, not going to catch a rail. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted. Shot. He was pushing that behind those balls for a return safety. Yeah, I believe he wanted to hit it thinner. 
I think you want to hit it going into the ball yeah. instead of the rail. It was a good idea, yeah. though. Yeah. But now Torsen has ball in hand, even though it's a little tricky layout. As you can see, the five and the eight is tied up. So. Well, you know, if I was Tavon Lin, I wouldn't want to be giving this three-time world champion ball in hand. Oh, absolutely, you're right. 2021 Hall of Famer. He's actually played nine events in the Pro Billiard Series. He's ranked 30th, and his highest finish is ninth, but he's had three or four of those. He's cashed six times in the nine events that he's played. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And Torsten is one of the most knowledgeable players oh. on the tour, so I'm actually excited to see how he's going to solve this situation, whether he's going to choose to break them open or play safe. Mm -hmm. Uh, right here, I think he's he's going to be going for the four ball in the bottom corner pocket, coming around three rails with the cue ball. Oh, he went the opposite way and went to the side so that he could uh, come after the five ball. Uh, yeah, it did. Or it's a little bit hard to see from the camera angle if he has an angle. This one is actually better. It seems like he has a slight angle. I'm not sure if he will be able to break them open. He's going to go for the for the stun shot and the safety off the yeah. five. Yeah. I think it's the most secure option because you can play safe, send the five into the rail and up table, and then you have an open position from there. Mm -hmm. And actually the key word you used there was secure. Yeah, exactly. It, and that's what you're looking to do. You here. have to always play the percentages. Like uh, the way I look at it, like if there's an offense option and uh, a defense, I have to ask myself, okay, if I play this particular shot 10 times in practice, which shot is going to give me more percentage to win the rack? And obviously this safety is the best possible option. And see, it worked really well for Torsten. He has ball in hand and the table is wide open. Mm -hmm. And even if he would have the good contact with the five, there is still a big chance that Torsten would have an open table. Yes. So but it's just the best shot to play. And play him he will here. He secured these four balls for the first win in this race day. Yeah, now it's just pretty much connecting the dots, as they say. Mm -hmm. Torsten rather efficient at the table with his time management. They are in the 30 second time clock with 60 seconds after the break. I do if he's going to try back. That was a shot. I was. I, I actually wonder whether you play that in the corner to get good shape on the on the nine, because that's a pretty steep uh, angle coming into the pocket. But he did great with it. And he was nice and close. That's what made him nice. And he'll secure the first game of this race to eight. It's the opening round of the Predator World Ten Ball. Very smart play by Torsten. Honestly, when it comes to playing the 10 ball with the triangle rack, I feel like it's all about the correct decision making. You can't be too offensive, mm -hmm. right? Because there's a lot of balls tied up after the break and you, you just have to make the right choices. It's very important. So do you prefer to play with a template or with a, with a hand rack? Um, I personally prefer the template uh, because it gives me more control of the rack as a player. The break becomes actually a skill that I'm 100% in control of. Either when the referee is racking, you're pretty much giving up the control to the referee and the players are not allowed to check the rack. So, uh, yeah, I yeah. mean, th there's a lot to go into it, but uh, I believe this is probably one of the fairest way to play. In my opinion. Mm -hmm. That way the break doesn't become the big issue. It's the right. movement afterwards. But there is two sides of the coin. When you use a template, it pretty much becomes a running out game, right? You have right. the balls spread open and the, the players became so good right now. Everybody mastered it. So it pretty much break and run. Uh, when we're using the triangle rack, we kind of like eliminate this factor. If, because there's a lot of balls tied up and it becomes kind of like a safety game, moving game, uh, you know. So, for example, right now, Torsten made the one and now he's going to play safe on the two. Oh, 
I'm sorry, he missed, he the, missed one. the one. Yeah. It looked it's like awfully he did. Deep. And how it's on the table. Look at it from this angle. It's yeah. hanging over the pocket. Wow, I was 100% sure that he made it. Hmm. Well, he made a ball. Okay, so now coming back pretty much to the same scenario as we talked about. Now he can play a soft stop shot and leave the cue ball behind the four. So once again, as I told you, it becomes the safety game. Mm -hmm. And I like Beautiful. the safeties when they're done that way, but he's yep. left a little bit, of, little bit of an opening to that first rail going into the bottom. But you can't block it all, can you? You can't take it all away. No, absolutely. I think the most important when you play a safety like this is to make sure you don't tie up the four ball. So then, like, let's assume he made a false shot, so now he has an open table. Well, he's going to open this up as he'll uh, play position. Yeah, he's not going to be too happy with this one, but look at the five ball again. Yep. It's not that easy. and decided to let his stroke out a little bit on this one. <coughs> That's a good shot. He has a slight angle in the three to stand it up table, play shape for the four. I'm actually curious if he would like to get a negative angle on the four to break open five in the six. And by a negative angle, you mean... Oh, over on to the left side. Yeah, okay. to leave the cue ball closer to the side rail. So it's like a back cut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I probably used the wrong terminology. No, 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 no. That, uh, that I, I could understand where you were going with it. That's right. your terminology. That's why I asked. Negative and positive would be you're yeah. on the, you're on the uh, right side of the six, mm -hmm. and then the other was a back cut. Right. And I totally understand that uh, a lot of times people ref refer to a back cut as shooting to the blind side of the ball. Yeah. So. I heard this one too. Mm -hmm. So that's why it, I asked. Yeah, it makes sense because uh, they call it like blind pocket because mm -hmm. you can't really see the pocket. It's going to go two rails. He got it off just he in time. Was just but on the edge of getting the shot block violation. But <laughs> I believe the rule is that as long as you stroke the ball, the tip touches the cue ball while mm -hmm. the shot clock is still going, you're fine. You're golden. Yeah. He's got a good shot. Uh, he can get to the five ball if it goes to the side or he can uh, run into the five. Yeah, I was actually curious if it goes to the side. But it looks like he will try to break them open. Use the rail first and open it up. And now he decides to play He'll shape play for the, the side. side. Yeah. yeah. If it looks went really good. If it went to the side, that's this is well. Thorson doesn't make many mistakes, so yeah. He's a very experienced and very smart player, so you would expect good decisions from him. And a very quality human being. He's just a great guy Absolutely. all around. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. See, like you can actually see that he was questioning himself. He decided to yeah. He decided to play safety, so he was kind of looking at the angle to play who was top spin and then he changed his position to play on the bottom of the cue ball to play a safety. But see, this is what I like. Um, and in this game, it's not about being a hero and like running out and having like beautiful run out and make it look cool. Mm -hmm. You know how so many people, they like to show off and make tough shots. Uh, it's about playing smart. And good safeties is something that wins the games and wins the championships. Because if you see top players play, yes, they can run out. They all do it very well. But what separates them from amateurs is that they know when to play a good safety. So then they create an opportunity at the table. Back to that word you used, secure. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice two railer at this. Could even go three rails and hit the five. It's a big ball coming off that rail, but he went very, very short on his two rail kick. And that's for all of you amateur players to learn the diamonds, learn to get to the middle of the head rail. You'll see a lot of shots there. And from there, you know, a foot either way, you can make a hit like for the 10 yeah. ball, things like that. So he went close to the uh, pocket there. And in billiards, that's called a corner player. 
And honestly, I feel like Torsten can smell the blood right now. He kind of like was checking out how his opponent is like with mm -hmm. kick shots. How does mm -hmm. he feel at table? And because he already missed few pretty easy kick shots, I think Torsten kind of like feels that this is how he can win the match because his opponent is not very good at kicking probably mm -hmm. or like struggling at this match at this table. So he's going to use it in his advantage. And this is smart because, you know, you have to find your opponent's weaknesses and then attack pretty much. Exactly. He sensed the weakness and it so far it's been kicking. Yeah. Um, so. And to be fair, it is challenging to kick uh, at the brand new cloth uh, and uh, very polished slick balls because it's there is a big slide going into the first trail. Mm -hmm. So it is hard to judge if you're not experienced in playing in these conditions. And especially if you arrive to the match five minutes before the match and you <laughs> yeah. haven't hit any, any any rail balls, you have no idea what the cloth is yeah, going to exactly. do. So, and that's exactly what this young man did, was he barely made it in time for the match. Yeah. He was running late from the hotel. Yeah, we don't know what happened, but yeah, he did come up a little bit Later, Torsten had like his 20, 30 minutes of warm up on the TV table okay. before his opponent even showed up. So, so uh, we'll be right back with the break. -up. And we're back as we see our referee, Jeff McGee from Shreveport, Louisiana, walking away from the table, left the ball's rack for Thorson, and Thorson to break, leading 2-0. Good job for Thorson so far, playing very smart, good decisions. No, not too aggressive. I like it, great uh, break. The nice. second ball went straight in the side, mm -hmm. and he has a shot on the one, which is probably what the everybody best thing wants that to can start happen. with is yeah. control. Exactly. He has dead control that two ball will not go by the three, so he has to decide whether to play the safety or um, get position for the two in the opposite corner. That's a small window with a four. Yeah, and he has kind of like very uncomfortable reach mm -hmm. for the one, so he would have to use the bridge. Torsten is sponsored by Molinari, Molinari Gabriels, and Kamui. Take like a good shot, but I think he will end up on the top of the eight. And for you Q freaks out there, he plays with one of the most beautiful cues on the tour. He's playing aces and straights, and that's all he's going to play. Yep. Meaning if he doesn't think he can make it, he's going to play safe. His opponent, like you said, hasn't shown him that uh, he's going to challenge him on the kick shots. Yeah, absolutely. Very good shot, smart. Don't have to overcomplicate it, just a simple stop shot to play shape for the side pocket. Now I believe he's going to roll it forward play for the five. I think the six ball goes on the side. I don't think it's going to be an issue. He just has to make sure that he gets like closer to this mm. side of the table, to the right of us. Mm -hmm. But then the key shot is going to be from the seven to the eight, because where the eight ball is, he would have to leave a nice angle for the six ball to get to the seven. So. Right now, it's a very important shot to make sure that he plays a good shape for the six. 
And he's on there pretty nice. He can just roll this in and play yeah. the seven to the corner as long as he maintains an angle to come back for the eight, either yeah. by follow or uh, using the side rail. He looks out. almost straight. I wonder yeah. if he's going to bump the 10 or he can avoid it. Yeah, he can avoid it, so that's nice. Well, because if you bump the 10, you would have to face kind of like awkward angle on the 7. So now he can just stun draw it back for the 8. Yeah, just like this. Well, it looks to me like Torsen's going to put a clinic on for us here. Yeah, it so far it seems like it's going to be a fast match. Mm -hmm. But you never know. It is a race to eight, and even if you're up 6-0 or 7-0, it's still not over. It's winter break format, and we haven't seen much of the young man from Vietnam, but if he's here and he's traveled to be here uh, with some opportunity, he can take over the table time. Absolutely, and to be fair, Thorsten didn't really give him much chances in this match. He was playing a really good shots, and every time uh, he was at the table, he had to face some tough kick shots or, you know, a tough layout, so there is nothing he can do much. Yeah, he's kicked, kicked three times and, uh, and missed all three and given Thorsten ball in hand. So, Ta Van Ling, 31-year-old from Vietnam, actually with a 747 Fargo to Torsten's 787 Fargo. And if we have, if when the players go to a break, I'm gonna go to a new setup from Fargo Rate, and it's called a head-to-head. -head. I can plug this in into Fargo, and plug in both players, and it'll tell me their previous meetings and where and when they played. That's actually very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, when I just moved to US, I was very excited to see how accurate the Fargo rate system is and because you know we don't really use it in Europe so it was new for me uh, so when you know I figure out I have established Fargo I believe it's like 724 or something like this mm -hmm. and then I was surprised how accurate it is like for example if I were to play a person with like 770 Fargo it would tell me exactly uh, that the guy is supposed to beat me like 8-5 or 8-6 and it's crazy because you know it's most of the time it's pretty accurate yeah. there are some upsets of course some unpredictable things happen but uh, I was surprised how accurate the system works according to like establishing people's rating and then uh, you know the definition of it it actually does give you a good standard to go by. It gives you an idea of the player you're playing, uh, what they normally play like. Of course, they can play above their Fargo yeah. and, of course, play below it. But, you know, we all have those days when yes. we play really good or really bad. But what it does, I believe it takes the average. And I like that it takes in consideration the all matches you played against different opponents because this is a really good way of like comparing your skill level when you play against uh, tougher opponents. It is actually the only tool we have to uh, compare and measure players on an international basis. I believe so, yeah. But it was funny, I remember when I just moved to States, I think my Fargo was like 718 or something like this is 716 and my husband Tyler he was like okay <laughs> when you reach 720 you officially considered a pro in US <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably that's probably about the number you like to use yeah but it is pro in men's circuit mm -hmm. you know not in women's there is uh, what I call the elite which is the 800 club mm. and there's 32 players that are 800 plus oh yeah and uh, but I mean, if you stop and think about it anybody in that 780 to 800 would probably be in there too. Absolutely. Because they can play to that range. But you know it is, uh, I know it can be a lot of frustration for people who just started playing because they always try to like boost the Fargo to make it higher. I would advise to everybody like don't worry about it, like don't pay too much attention to it. Because in the end of the day it does not determine who you are, or how do you progress, or how you play. Just focus on the present moment, focus on one match, on one ball at a time, and 
this is all you can do. You cannot control certain things, you know, because sometimes you would play nine ball and you would get your opponent gets lucky and you lost the game to your opponent you're never supposed to lose and then you get all upset. Mm -hmm. um, because there are some things that are completely out of your control and you just have to let it go sometimes. Oh, that was a, that was actually a that good was look. A, that was at a huge mistake. Taban, uh, yeah. Ling here. Um, he is not comfortable with kicking the ball at all because that's a very not. straightforward kick. It is. Like it you can just tell that. Uh, and to tell you the truth, had he been successful, the cue ball is going to travel around the six seven. He's yep. going to be hooked. He had to go straight into mm -hmm. the ball. So I agree. And when you kick the two rails at this ball, you actually give yourself a really good chance to have something good happens because if you go into the ball from the second rail, you can either make the ball or you can play a really good safety. Mm -hmm. You can get like really unlucky sometimes, but once again, this is not something that you can 100% control. But and once again, Torsten is just smelling the blood and he understands that this is his chance to yeah. get a 4-0 lead. Yeah, at this point, Torsten has no fear for his opponent. Absolutely not. Unfortunately. Yeah. No, he hasn't had a straight open shot yet, though. He's had a kick shot every time, and that is talent in itself. Torsten I is keeping his opponent at bay. Yes, I agree with you, but this type of kick shots that he had uh, against Torsten, you can't just miss those ones, unfortunately. And the score is nice four run zero. out and Torsen extends his lead. He looks yep. very confident at the table and you know there is nothing that can break his confidence at the moment. Yeah, there's there's no reason not to be confident and he's halfway to his goal of eight games. Yes, and he had a lot of table time already. As we mentioned, he came up to the practice table like 20, 30 minutes earlier. He got a feel for the table and he was pretty much dominating the match for the last four X. So that's like the toughest part when like when you're down, you just want to get this opportunity, get the open table to have a little bit of table time to get a little bit more comfortable at the table. And then everything can change very quickly. Four zero down, it's honestly, it's nothing in the race to eight. On table one, we have two streaming tables in this tournament. On table one, you have Lee Van Corteza and Roberto Gomez. Oh, it's a great match. It's a Filipino invasion there. Yeah. <laughs> two great players, two players that you would call elite. Absolutely. I was actually talking to Roberto this moment, uh, this morning, and he said, yeah, he's uh, looking forward for the match. And they played each other for so many times already. And he said, in the end of the day, it's going to be a coin flip mm -hmm. who's gonna win this match who's gonna win the leg and extend the lead first and makes less mistakes meanwhile tours yeah torsten isn't gonna come off his uh, his plan here he's gonna keep him tied up and let him work he just barely left an open one ball that looks like he can see the right side of it, but it's it's I tough. Think, yeah, it does, doesn't look like it cue? because he's going to, he's uh, going to he's going for a jump. I believe if he can see the right side, it's way too close to the three, so he would risk to. Now how would you be it. feeling in a match like this where uh, you're trailing 4 0, a race to 8, mm -hmm. and you haven't seen an open shot yet? Um, that's a thing when you're trailing like this, uh, you're just gonna make sure that you focus 100% on every inning. Like every time you're at the table, you got to give 100% because it's so easy to get in this negative mindset of like being down and kind of don't care much about mm -hmm. the shots being all like I'm hooked behind the ball, there's nothing I can do. No, you can always, as long as you're at the table, you can always create a possibility for you. So if you're you still straining to come out of that chair yeah. and say, give me an opportunity. Just Absolutely. Let me see the ball, see what I can yeah. do. See, he's done it again here. He's done it oh again, no, but I think he left I, an yeah. opening. I'm not sure if he can make it, but he can definitely see the one ball. It was a good shot, though. He got a little bit unlucky, like, getting the touch on the three. Mm -hmm. But it was a smart shot because he has a lot of blocking balls that can potentially guarantee a good safety. 
And he's shaking his head, so maybe he cannot. He can see enough to hit it or kick <sighs> it. I feel right. really bad for him right now because every time he's at the table, he has nothing easy. Yeah, well, if he can't make this ball, he went for it. He had a nice kick to kick between the rail and the five and send the ball down and hold the key. He had a good yeah, return safety. Yeah, I see what you mean. See if he parks him behind the five ball. Well, he's going to just give him just, long distance. Yeah, he's just going to send the one ball up table. Now, the reason he didn't bank it to the other side, try to get behind the five, was the ten ball. He runs into it. He gives up a shot. Yeah, I think so. Kay. Now, see, here you can he can make the one ball, but then what? Yeah. He's There's got a tough positional shot do. on the two. I mean, I would... I would probably honestly like slow roll the one, get the cue ball closer to the center of the table and go for a bank. You know, there's a saying when, when you're trailing, you're supposed to be more aggressive. When you have a big lead, sometimes you want to be a little bit more defensive. Because oh. when you're trailing, you pretty much have nothing to lose, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to create this opportunity. So sometimes you have to be more aggressive in certain shots. And that's very true, especially in a game called one pocket. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, Thorsten, okay. he's going to get behind the tab. Yeah. To be honest, he, he didn't uh, cue it very well. Like, he kind of, like, mm -hmm. jumped up Okay. Uh, on the ball. You, you saw how you punchy that was? Yeah, yeah, you saw how punchy that was. Yeah. Torsten is looking very focused in the chair. That's a thing, you know, how they say that you play two games. The first one when you're at the table, and the second game is when you're at the chair, uh, which is prob probably the most important game that you will play because you're supposed to compose yourself. Wow, what a, what a well, shot. Well, we saw something very positive from the young man from Vietnam. It was probably was probably the shot that can create an opportunity right here mm -hmm. but see um, even right now what would you do you can't really cut this two ball in right you can try to go for it but in my opinion it's like a suicide right. so you either play a safety or go for a bank I like I liked actually going for it wow I did that that one particular shot uh, the safety, everything's too far away from him. The ba if he tries to bank it up, the nine ball's in the way. He can't really find cover. Yeah. I, I like going for it. And the speed, would I thought, would offer a better position than what he ended up with. Yeah, I like what he did. He yeah. definitely misjudged the rail a little bit. I believe the rail played a little bit too soft. He expected a little bounce, but it didn't happen. Very smart shot. That's a nice shot. Yeah. Cue ball, did it run far enough behind the 10? No, but... But he's still okay. Yeah. Now Torsten is in a tough spot. He has to figure out how to play a safety back. Do you like a, a two rail behind the five with the cue yes, ball? Yes, I would definitely try to send the uh, three ball towards the side rail mm -hmm. and go two, three rails behind the five. If he could land his cue ball on the very far right rail, the bottom rail where mm -hmm. his chalk is, yeah. it would tuck into the five yeah. very nicely. He's not going to go that far. He's just going to go he and hit it straight play, across. Yeah, the standard just separation safety, which, you know, uh, it really depends how you feel at the moment. I feel like I'm going to go for this bank shot in the side pocket, bring the cue ball around three rails for the four. Uh, it is really tough because on the slick table, uh, the rail is going to play very soft, mm -hmm. so you would have to hit it so hard in order to get shape for the four of this bank. Well, you had a good, you know, from just in defense of my crazy call, um, you had a good cut shot. You're going to hit it pretty thin. Mm -hmm. Right hand English takes you with a natural English to get back yeah. around. That's the only reason I would have even considered the bank. It, it you know, right. this is nothing crazy about this idea. It's 
really there are so many shots at the table, so many variations and really personal preference. There is no right way of playing the position. It depends how do you feel at this moment. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to like doing commentary with you. You're bailing me out of my crazy shots. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Anytime. Uh -oh. Uh oh, that looks bad. Well, here's the first opening opportunity for the Van Lin. We haven't seen much of him lately, so let's see yeah. if he can. We saw a nice kick shot, a happen. nice jump shot. Yeah. And then. Um, and then he cut the two ball he, in. He didn't have much more to work with. And so to be he, honest, hats off to him. He won the safety battle right mm -hmm. now. That's what I mean in like creating opportunity and giving your best in every kick shot, every safety, because you never know when you're gonna have a opportunity. Well now he's got a straightforward run here, so. Okay. Here's his chance to. Yeah. Put a little fear in yeah. Thorsten's heart. Mm -hmm, exactly. Two rail shape for the five. I see like he prefers to stun this ball, which... Your average nine ball player? Uh, no, I would say he's probably not very familiar with the slick table because to be honest, on a slick table, I think you're supposed to play more natural angle. You don't want to force it I like the follow, in. and it yes. laid very natural. Because right now, I mean, he can still make and play shape for the eight, but he, he made it more complicated for himself. And see, it's like a snowball effect. You make one mistake, and then it leads to another, and then, yeah, it just gets more and more challenging from yeah. there on. And he's called the bank on the side on the eight ball. There yeah. you see him calling it again. The I replay. wonder if he's just going to play it soft or he's going to let his stroke out. Because the nine ball is in the pocket. You can just kind of yeah. like, that doesn't well, look like he made He didn't it. open it up. So. So now, Thorsten is faced with a dilemma. What is he going to do here? Yeah. Because obviously the eight ball, he can't play it on the top right corner. The nine ball is blocking the pocket. So he's he either is going to cut it in the side. I, I believe so. And that's it what he's like. uh, either that or bank it down the middle of the table and take the cue ball up. But I yeah. like to cut the side. Not sure how much of an angle he's got. Oh, perfect. That's a very good shot. Especially with the nine ball hanging on the pocket. Yeah. That's you can't go wrong. Yeah. Like that's a natural path of the cue ball. It just goes across the table two or three times. Let's see. I'm one of these guys that if it lays natural, mm -hmm. I'll take a shot at yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. But Torson's the kind of guy that's going to take a 5-0 lead. Yeah, and honestly, Van Lien had his opportunity and unfortunately he didn't use it in his advantage. He was looking at five balls all in the open and yeah. didn't play position uh, for one of them and ended up uh, having to bank the eight. Yeah. And he missed a fairly easy bank too. I think the, yeah, I think the key, the key mistake that he made is the trying to play shape from four to the five. Mm -hmm. Like he had a very small angle, so he was trying to force it in with a stun shot, which you could understand that on the new cloth, new tables, the, t the cloth, uh, the bed itself plays quick, but the rails play soft. So every time the cue ball goes into the rail, it loses a lot of speed. So like you want to stick with those natural angles and with top spin, you know, yeah. if you want the cue ball to roll further. Not only the natural angles, the, the English is much smooth. High, high English is much yeah. smoother than that English. High English, and you usually play this type of shots mm -hmm. with uh, high inside, so inside helps the cue ball to speed up off the rail. Well, this is a very good opening for Torsten, and things get uh, more complicated for Ta Van Ling. Absolutely, and you know how <laughs> we love to call it is when you don't use your opportunity, like when you miss an easy ball or uh, you made a bad decision when you had the opening, it's like the pool gods are punishing you. It, the opponent oh, so immediately... Oh, you believe in the pool gods. I do believe in the pool gods because I used to face them all the time. <laughs> and it's funny because, you know, suddenly when you miss this easy opportunity when you were supposed to get out, opponent starts getting some rolls, he's getting, you know, he's making balls on the break, opening tables. Look how nice he's played position Yeah, here. absolutely. I just, 
a little bit concerned about the five ball. I believe if the combination is fired, he might just go for the combination without trying to overcomplicate things. Nailed it. Just roll the four ball and go for the combo. It looks straight in. Yeah, that's what I thought. Because once again, coming back to the brand new tables and new cloth, you don't want to like force it in and stun it all the way across unless mm -hmm. you have to. For all these, all, all of those out there, she's making some very, give us some very good tips for a lot of the amateur players and a lot of the, even mid-level. Yeah, but the thing that the amateur players rarely play on, uh, you know, brand new cloth. They usually play on the pool, pool room tables. But if you were to come to the uh, this tournament, the BCA and CSI mm -hmm. Expo, they have so many seven foot tables that are like brand new tables for new cloths so those tips would be probably valuable very useful for you guys. Uh, yeah. they have over 300 tables and four ballrooms here at the csi expo <coughs> and uh, we have the teams that have come in they start tomorrow actually on wednesday right now there's a lot of singles play and mm -hmm. scotch doubles you have vendors from all over the world uh, surrounding the main ballroom this one is the second ballroom here um, and uh, so you have close to 7,000 people coming in and out of these ballrooms wow. uh, <laughs> to provide uh, spectators to mingle with the pros because they're all over. You meet them in the elevator, uh, take a picture with them in the, in the walkways. Absolutely. I mean, it's just... It's just so much fun for the players and for the spectators. It is exciting. I yeah. was honestly... The last year was the first time I came to the CSI mm -hmm. Expo and when I walked in I was like, Wow. <laughs> like I couldn't like I couldn't even talk because I, I didn't know what to say. It was just I was speechless. It was something that I've never seen before mm -hmm. and it is truly the greatest pool experience in the world how they call it and you just have to experience it at least once. It is very impressive when you walk into the main ballroom. Yes. And, and you just see the a back. sea of tables. Yeah. Hundred and ten tables lined out in the pro arena in the back. Um, and there's people on every table. If tomorrow it will be so crowded you will have trouble walking down Absolutely. the main walkways. I remember the last year when I walked in, uh, it was kind of weird situation last year. So when I moved to States, uh, you know, I had so many ambitions that I'm going to play a lot of tournaments, the world games were coming up, and then unfortunately the war happened and uh, Olympic Committee banned athletes mm -hmm. from Russia and Belarus to play in the all official event so uh, I'm from Belarus so I had to face this ban so imagine moving to states pretty much the capital of pool in the world with so many events going on and I couldn't play so fortunately for me uh, probably the series gave me an opportunity to work on the event uh, in Vegas so I was doing uh, some commentary I was doing interviews with the players doing some media work and it was exciting but every time I would walk in the arena there were like hundred people wanting to like take a picture with me and like ask me to sign a ball or case and they were all asking when I'm going to play and I had to explain to everybody why I'm not playing and every day hearing this oh i'm sorry this is so unfair and it's just like it was so depressing in the end of the tournament i was just you know i'm just so done i can't wait for this to be over because it's like you there in the greatest pool experience in the world and you can't play, can't play. it is painful and yeah. you have so many fans so many people who follow in you and they all want to see you play and you can't but i'm so fortunate to be able to play this year i i had a blast in the women's event it it was amazing. Well, I'll tell you right now, I commend you for what you did last year. I remember watching you doing all the interviews with people and mm -hmm. players and tables and yeah. uh, the response you were getting from people. Um, it was just, you did a great, outstanding job. Thank you. And very supportive. I enjoyed it and just the fact that I know all of these players on a personal level, it was, it was a little bit easier for me to connect with them, you mm -hmm. know, doing some cool funny interviews and stuff like this look but how nice yeah he, he tucked him in i said i like it i like it when you tuck somebody in right there like that because There's it takes away can really do. Uh, two rails off the bottom if it goes by does uh, he if it goes by yeah i think, I think he has a one rail kick but there is a nine ball uh actually the nine ball is right on the line Nin of the one rail it's kick. very very close yeah I, I believe he will be able to avoid one. it nope and Torsten again has played a very successful safety yeah. and ball in hand. 
and everything's open. Yeah, when I look at the layout, I mean, it's pretty much connecting the dots, and then when you get to six ball, you really have to make sure that you get a good angle on the seven, because mm -hmm. if you look at the eight, the only pocket you can play it is in the bottom right corner, right? So, uh, have to be very smart with this six ball. Just planning. Yeah, I would probably get shape from the six to the seven somewhere in the center of the table and then go underneath the eight and the ten. And play it in the same pocket yes. as the seven. Exactly. Perfect. Hit, hit the bottom rail, stun it one or two rails. See, with you as a coach, I could probably run three balls. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you could make it happen. You know, the, in the end of the day, the goal is to make it simple. You don't have to overcomplicate the things. Like, it is about it is about simplicity at the table. It's about eliminating the travel of the cue ball as much as you can, especially when you're faced with like conditions that you're not familiar. You want to keep it simple. And Torsh is doing just that. He's going to slide right over to the left side of the eight. And look how nice yeah, he's done this. A bit too Off soft the rail. To me. Yeah. Well. The 10 ball holds him for the 9. Just a matter of pocketing the 8. Yeah. I believe if he's going to slow roll it or he's going to let the stroke out a little bit and then bump the 10 and play the shape for the corner pocket, the 9 ball in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Just soft and... Soft and easy. Yeah, he's okay. Now he can go two rails yeah, right and play, play the 10 ball in the bottom right corner. Nicely done. I like and the way you checked it. This puts Torsten on the hill. Oh. One game away from his first match, opening match, for to pitch a complete shutout. The young man has run maybe three balls. And then he got a little out of line on his position, or uh, his attempt was failed. And Torsten has punished him, and he's kicked at everything else other than that one time at the table. Yeah. You can see his body language yeah. at the chair doesn't look good. He's yeah. beating himself up, and yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't look good to him. Uh, as we spoke about it, I believe it was 4-0 or 5-0. He had a ball in hand, mm -hmm. and he had an open table. He didn't use this opportunity, and now Torsten pretty yeah. much just punished him for this. And his highlights are the one, the one jump shot, and the uh, the cut shot. I think he made. Oh, a he did make. He made two very nice cut, cut shots. shots. Yes. Yeah. Nice point. Good catch. Torsten, the game away. Puck. He's breaking well. Torsten is breaking really well so far, and look at this. <laughs> what a nice way to cap off this match for yeah. Thorson, especially in his mind. Yeah. It's probably the best thing in the world when you break on the hill and you have a wide open table and not so many troubles. Perfect shape for the wow. four. He has a slight angle to stun it across the table and play the five in the same side pocket. See, this is... You said connect the dots. I like to call it tic-tac-toe. Mm, yeah, that's pretty much the same yeah. thing. Exactly. I would keep it simple. I would just play a stop shot, maybe draw back just a little bit. But see, he decided to draw back all the way to the top rail. He'll slide above the eight there. Yeah. Nice and easy. Person looking solid. He wasn't really challenged this match. No, nope, definitely not. He found his gear and he figured out the opponent's weakness right away in the beginning of the match. He realized that his opponent is struggling a little bit, or not a little bit, uh, you know, with the table, the way the rails react, and he just pretty much used it in his advantage. I mean, good job. That's, that's what you're supposed to do, right? Mm -hmm. On yeah. such a high level. And this 10 ball to close the match for Torsten Homan. Move on to the second round. Unde not even losing a match, uh, a game. Yeah, well, good job for Torsten. He played fairly well in this match and he deserved to win.
Well, Margaret, thank you very much for joining me in the booth. This thank is George Teacher and Margaret Fefalova saying we'll see you down the road here. See you guys later.